Welcome, in front of me is a OnePlus Pad 2 and today I will show you how you can go through the setup process of this device. So, when you put it up for the very first time you should be presented with a similar screen that you can see as I have and all you can do is just press on the arrow and then find your desired language from the list. Now for me it already selected a correct one which is English, so I'm gonna select next then we can choose our region, um, you don't actually need to select the correct one, doesn't really change anything as far as I'm aware. Uh, then we have some legal information which we can just select next. Now you can actually tap on the uh, view details to read exactly what you are agreeing to in the user agreement and privacy policy. Uh, but if you're like everyone else, you're just gonna ignore this and select next and then get pe surprised Pikachu face when you actually want to do something and turns out the corporation decided to F you over by making something in that legal document uh, obscurely vague and uh, prevent you from seeking legal actions. Um, I'm referring to Disney, by the way. Uh, anyway, uh, next we have some uh, setup uh, using another device. So this allows you to copy data from a device that you might already own to this one. So all the accounts, applications, and so on. Now I don't want to do that, so I'll be selecting skip, but you can choose either Android or iPhone if you want to go through with this. Next we have connect to Wi-Fi. This step is completely optional and you can do so right now. This will allow you to also sign into your Google uh, account, have the access to backup and restore your data from the cloud and or well, primarily restore. And uh, there was something else, which, oh, date and time, uh, which will be set automatically. Now, if you choose to skip this, uh, basically date and time won't be set automatically and you won't have the Google login page show up. And anyway, next page, we have some Google services like location, scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. Now you can toggle those off. As you can see, we do have a toggle, but let's be honest, it's Google. So this toggle probably does nothing. And it's not like we can verify this. Anyway, we're gonna go to the next page, which presents us with a unlock method. So we can protect our device and we can do so by using either a face recognition or pin par pattern or password. Now, if you're planning to use face recognition, you will also need to select pin pattern or password. And the reason for that is if something would happen to your face where the device doesn't recognize it anymore, um, then you would lose access to your device. And hence that would leave you with the second option, which would be pin pattern or password, which doesn't change depending on your facial biometrics. And you can also not protect your device at all if you want to, though I wouldn't recommend. Uh, and uh, even though I don't recommend it, it's what I'm going to be doing. Then we have some recommended quick connect uh, VDC server. You can go over these, um, enable them if you want to, whatever they are. I can also tap on learn more to figure out what this exactly is. And I go to the next page. And this now gives us, a, gives us the option for screen display, which is um, just a font size. I'm going to keep it at default. Navigation method, we have two different ones, buttons, gestures. I'm going to go with gestures. You can also learn gestures if you have never used them. Uh, you don't get such a thing for buttons. And once you select done, you can then click on get started and this will take you to the home screen. And there we go, the device is now fully set up. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.